Hey guys, I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit of breakdown of the Saturday Night Fights, UFC 124, St. Pierre versus Koscheck 2. Um, this should be a pretty good fight card. It's going to be in Canada, which usually has some of the best MMA crowds, especially when their hometown hero is fighting. Uh, I guarantee you, you're probably going to hear some of the loudest cheers that you've heard all year long, but I guarantee you that you're going to hear the loudest boos you've heard all year long when Josh Koscheck walks in that room. Overall, um, I really wasn't too pumped about this card a week ago. Uh, I, I saw it as basically being the GSP cost fight, which I didn't even think was going to be close, and then a bunch of other fights on the card. But after hearing some of the interviews this week, uh, watched the press conference today, and seeing the UFC countdown show, I'm getting a little bit more pumped about it. I still think this is pretty much the weakest co main event we've seen all year. But some of the other fights on the card are interesting. And after really thinking about the main event, um, I, I do think Koscheck's going to lose. But if you look at his skill set, uh, I think he actually is a tougher matchup for GSP than um, any of his fights since the second BJ Penn fight. Um, I, I think that a good striker is not really going to have much of a chance against GSP ever unless he has good takedown defense. But a wrestler is going to be able to give him a little bit more of a run for his money. And that's what Josh Koscheck is. He's a really good wrestler who has developed some good striking skills. From a betting perspective, um, there's really not a lot of good fights to bet on on this card. Um, Tiago Alves, John Howard is, is too much of a wild card. It's hard to say who's going to really win that fight for sure. Um, Joe Stevenson, Mac Danzing, I think that's more of the same. The only one that I would consider betting on would be Stefan Struve versus Sean McCorkle because I think the line on Stefan Struve is um, a little bit too high. I think people have too much faith in him. I also think that people are giving him um, uh, a good line because they really don't know enough about Sean McCorkle. So let's start breaking down the fight with the first fight on the main card pay-per-view, which is going to be uh, Tiago Alves versus John Howard. So opening up the pay-per-view is Tiago Alves versus John Howard, and uh, I think this is probably going to be the best fight of the night. Um, and really, honestly, it should be the co-main event. It's, it's, it's a lot stronger than the Stefan Stu Sean McCorkle main event, which will, or the co-main event, which we'll talk about later. But Tiago Alves, John Howard, it's going to be a great fight. Uh, these are two strikers, probably two of the best strikers in the welterweight division. I think Tiago Alves probably has the best Muay Thai in the welterweight division. And John Howard, he may not have the most technical striking, but I think he has exceptional knockout power. I think this is going to be a stand-up battle. And this is really what these guys need. John Howard has recently been kind of exposed as someone who's a really good striker, but not the best wrestler. Um, and Tiago Alves, I, I feel bad for that guy. He's a fantastic fighter. I think he's a top five welterweight, but he lost to GSP and was really humiliated. He wasn't ready for that fight. And then immediately after that, he had a lot of injuries that set him out for almost a year and a half. And then he couldn't catch a break. As soon as he got back, he was tasked to fight John Fitch, which was a terrible matchup for him again. He got out-wrestled in that fight. And really, I think he has better takedown defense than people think, but the problem is he's been fighting such high-level uh, wrestling MMA fighters that he hasn't really been able to showcase that. Um, in any case, I don't think he'll get to this fight. This is going to be a stand-up war. I don't think it's going to go to a decision. Someone's going to get knocked out. Um, I favor Tiago Alves in this fight. I think that he's a more diverse fighter, he's a Muay Thai fighter, he uses knees, he uses really powerful leg kicks, he uses good striking combinations. John Howard's a powerful hitter, but he's mainly more of a boxer, he's a power puncher, he's got his, his power right hook, and um, I think Tiago Alves just has a little bit more tools in his toolbox. So the second fight on the card is something that um, I wouldn't say I'm super excited to see, but I am really curious about. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how it plays out. And that is Joe Daddy Stevenson versus uh, Mac Danzing. Um, this is uh, always a tough fight to watch when you see two guys that are really desperate. Both these guys need to win this fight. And if they don't, there is a chance they're going to get cut, especially because they're lightweights. And the lightweight division was already the most competitive division in the UFC. And now that the WEC uh, lightweight fighters are going to be merging into it, it's just going to get more so. I think Joe Stevenson, there's a small chance of get cut if he loses this fight. Mac Danzing, I, I really do believe if he loses this fight, he's going to get cut. He was the uh, the winner of uh, The Ultimate Fighter Season 6, 
which was uh, one of the worst seasons, had one of the lowest talent pools, and really no one on that season went on to find any sort of success in the UFC. And Mac Danzig's success has been really limited. He's had some tough matchups, some tough decisions, but also the victories he's had um, have not been against really high-quality fighters, and a lot of people think that uh, you know the, the best points of his career are over, and it's going to be more downhill than uphill from here. As far as these two fighters, uh, I gotta say I really like Joe Stevenson more in this fight. He's been on a career comeback. He's changed training camps. He's now training with Greg Jackson's camp in New Mexico. I think that's been a great change for him. It's really shown um, he had a tough loss last time around to George Sotteropoulos, but George Sotteropoulos is, uh, what, 9-0 and now? So I don't think you can really take too much away from Joe Stevenson for that. Um, I think him and Mac Danzine are really, in a lot of ways, equal fighters. They're both well-rounded. They have good jiu-jitsu, good boxing. Mac Danzine tends to be really aggressive, and so does Joe Stevenson, so I do think this will be an exciting fight. But I think the tiebreaker here is going to be the Greg Jackson factor. Mac Danzing, he's always kind of stayed in the same training camp. He's mainly had the same guys around him, and I think because of that, he's never had anyone to push him to the next level. Joe Stevenson has that, and Greg Jackson is going to watch the tape on Mac Danzing. He's going to figure out what his weaknesses are, and he's going to sick Joe Stevenson on them. And uh, I think he's going to zero. The co-main event for this fight is going to be Stefan Struve versus Sean McCorkle. I think this is a really weak co-main event between two fighters that literally uh, no one knows really anything about Sean McCorkle. And the only thing we know about Stefan Struve, in my opinion, is that he's a little bit overrated. I think he's a novelty fighter. He was pretty much brought into the UFC because he's the biggest MMA fighter that anyone's ever seen. He's 6 feet 11. His nickname is the Skyscraper. But as far as skill and technique, um, for being from the Netherlands, where they're some of the best kickboxers in the world, I don't think his kickboxing is that good. This is a guy that almost got taken out by Christian Warcraft if it wasn't for that uh, third round rally that he did. And... Uh, Sean McCorkle, literally, I mean, no one knows who this guy is. He's had one fight in the UFC on a prelim card in um, which he took down, uh, what was it? I think it was Mark Hunt, Paul Wintello. I think it was Mark Hunt. And, um, you know, Mark Hunt, I think he's lost like five of his last six. I mean, this guy's completely out of shape. Beating him says nothing about Sean McCorkle, even if he did it in, in less than 60 seconds, submitted him. At the end of the day, we really don't know too much about this guy. Um, I think if you are a betting person, this is a decent fight to bet on because Stefan Struve is a, is a pretty heavy favorite, and I think that's only because people really don't know a lot about Sean McCorkle, and I think this is something that could be a good upset fight. Stefan Struve, in my opinion, again, um, is a little bit overrated, and I think we're probably going to see that um, come Saturday night. As far as the co-main event status, it doesn't make sense to me why this is the co-main event. Um, I think Tiago Alves and John Howard should be the co-main event. Tiago Alves, he fought UFC 100, which is one of the biggest pay-per-views they've ever done. People know who he is. And John Howard, I think, has fought on two pay-per-view main cards so far. And uh, these two guys are well-known. It's going to be probably the best fight of the night. And uh, I think that should be the co-main event. Or at least Joe Stevens and Mac Dancing. You know, these guys are both the Ultimate Fighter season winners. People know who they are. I think that'll also be a good fight. So maybe someone owed Stefan Struve a favor or something for taking a fight on short notice. In any case, it could be the best fight of the night. You never know. So the UFC main event, George St. Pierre versus Joss Koscheck, an entire season of The Ultimate Fighter dedicated to building up the hype, the rivalry, the matchup between these two guys. Um, you know, I don't think Koscheck is really a great crash, trash talker, especially when we've had a couple months of Chael Sonnen and Dan Hardy. Um... He's alright, but really all the pressure on this fight is on Josh Koscheck. George St. Pierre said it best today at the press conference um, when he said that Josh Koscheck loses this fight, then we're never really going to hear from him again. I mean, he's, he's probably never going to get another title shot. And uh, really, if GSP loses this fight, which most people don't think he will, I don't think he will, even if he were, he's going to get a title shot within a year. They're going to make the trilogy happen. Um, and it'll probably happen again in Canada. You never know. So Koscheck does have a lot of pressure on him for this fight. He's a heavy underdog, and I think that's deserved. I don't think he's going to win this fight. Um, Koscheck is a good wrestler. I think GSP is better. I think GSP has better takedown defense, better takedowns, better submission skills, and he has fantastic guard passing skills. 
Also, you know, a lot's been made of Koscheck striking, but I think his striking is still fairly rudimentary. Um, he's mainly a boxer. He doesn't throw a lot of combinations. He doesn't utilize a jab. He mainly uses that big right hand. He's got knockout power in that, and um, I don't think that's going to be enough for GSP. GSP is a good striker, and people forget this. They, they saw how he, he fought Dan Hardy, Tiago Alves, and they've kind of started stereotyping him as a wrestler. But don't forget, this guy has a, a vicious Muay Thai. He's got very good kickboxing. He's got great head kicks. He's creative. He uses spinning back kicks and, and uh, hammer fists and, and all sorts of things that we haven't seen in a while, and maybe we will see in this fight. And really, speaking of which, I think that's the big question everyone's wondering is, where's this fight going to take place? If I were Koscheck, I would try to take GSP down. I think of all the areas he spent in the octagon, he's probably spent the least amount of time on his back. And even though he has good takedown defense, he also really hasn't had to defend a serious takedown attempt in a few years. No one since Matt Hughes has really tried to take GSP down, and I think that's what Koscheck should try to do. Um, and some of the stuff GSP has been saying lately in interviews is hinting that he's anticipating that. So it is really interesting where this fight's going to take place. I think anywhere it happens, GSP is going to have the advantage. I think after this, um, Koscheck is going to have a long road back to any sort of significance in the welterweight division. And I think if GSP win this, wins this fight, he's probably looking at one more fight in the welterweight division against uh, Jake Shields. And then after that, I really think that they're going to push him to fight Anderson Silva. There's going to be really no one left. BJ Penn is fighting John Fitch, but the winner of that, no, no matter what, has already fought GSP. They're not going to do a rubber match with BJ Penn, and they really don't want to do another John Fitch match. So if GSP can beat Koscheck, and if he can beat Shields, then I think the Anderson Silva match is going to be on, assuming Anderson Silva can win his next two fights as well against uh, Vitor Belfort and Yushin Okami, which, honestly, I think he will. So, we should have some good stuff coming in the future. I'll probably do one of these after the fight and analyze my picks. Just to review again for the main event, I'm picking GSP to beat jo uh, Josh Koscheck. For the co-main event, um, I'm going to do a wild card here and pick Sean McCorkle to beat Stefan Struve. I don't know a lot about McCorkle, but I'm willing to bet against Struve on this. Um, I'm picking Joe Day Stevenson to beat Mac Danzing. And I'm picking Tiago Alves to beat John Howard. Um, we'll see you guys after the fight. Have a good time Saturday night. And uh, if anyone wants to watch, let me know because I'll be hanging out with some friends. Okay.